Hello and welcome to another vlog. I got Indy to decorate my bed today <laughs> and she went a bit ham. She put all of, the, all of the toys on there. So we've got something a little bit extra special going on in the background today. But so today I am going through the Buzz Wordathon. So basically Kayla from Books and Lala, who has an amazing channel and honestly is the most creative booktuber I've come across. She just has these amazing ideas for themed book vlogs that I think are brilliant. So highly recommend her channel and definitely go and have a look. But basically every year she does this Buzz Wordathon, which is a book bingo, you know, so each month there's a theme or a word that you need to find a book that correlates to that and then you can tick off that box. So I've been doing it this year and I thought let me see how I'm going and I'm actually really surprised that I've only got a few left to go. So I thought why not just do them all in the one vlog and then you've completed you completed the buzzwordathon and you can tick that off your list. So what I'll do first is I'll go through all of the books that I've already completed for the slots and just briefly briefly sum those up. And then I will read the remaining ones for the remaining words. So that is the plan for today. So let's have a look at what I've already completed. Okay, so let's get going. So for January, the word is there, there and there. And as you can see, this is empty. So we will come back to that and I'll let you know what I've decided to grab for that one. So for February, the word was positive words. So I chose the Happy Couple. Now this is a book about a couple who are going through some issues and, and their friends as well, even though they appear on the surface to be a very happy couple. This book I ended up DNFing. It did remind me a lot of Sally Rooney's kind of books, like Think Normal People, in that the characters were just really unlikable and I didn't care for their relationship. I did like the short chapters in this, but I knew I wasn't going to like this book, so I did an effort, but that did fill the prompt for positive words. And then for March, we had character names. So for this, I did the book, A Girl Called Corpse. So you're just meant to have the name of the character in the title of the book. So this book is a middle grade book, and basically it's like Hocus Pocus meets Corpse Bride. You've got a little ghost, awful witches, spider friends, and basically it's a book about finding your family, and finding your own power. I did enjoy it. I thought it was it was a decent read, but it was probably a little younger because the writing was very simple, but that's what filled the prompt for the main character name. So for April, the key word is nature words. And so for this one, I did It's Lonely at the Center of the Earth because uh, nature words. So this was a graphic novel about a woman's journey and experience with depression. And whilst I absolutely went gaga, over her illustration style, especially too, because she varied it and sort of changed the technique and the style throughout the novel. It was a really depressing read. It was hard to get through. Uh, the content was a bit full on, so I didn't enjoy it, but uh, I in awe of the artist's talent. So that was my book for Nature Words. So for May, the keyword is every. So for this, I chose The Well-Lived Life, a 102-year-old doctor's six secrets to health and happiness at every age. So it is exactly what the very long title suggests. It's a centenarian doctor's advice for how to live a well-lived life. It was very mostly focused on holistic medicine, which I do uh, resonate with. However, I felt like this book was pretty much more of a memoir and it was heavily laced with Christianity. So it's not quite what I was expecting it to be. So didn't love it that much, but that's what filled the prompt for the every. So for June, the prompt is a repeating word. So the word has to be mentioned twice. So for that one, I did 12 bites, how we got here and where we might go next. So the wee wee <laughs> was the repeating word. This is basically a bunch of essays from Jeanette Winterson about technology, but mostly AI and how we have gotten to the development of it based on past inventions and moments in history that served as stepping stools to where we are now. I didn't love this. I think I gave it three stars. I said it felt like a very dry history textbook. I was hoping for more of Jeanette's writing and personal opinions but it was more heavily the former not the latter so i didn't love it but that's what i used for the june prompt so the next one was july and that's terms of measurement kayla even mentioned half a soul 
in that because half is a measurement and I had that on my TBR so I read half a soul which I loved I gave four and a half stars it is a cozy Regency fairy fantasy it's got an unflappable and self-possessed FMC with an uncouthly passionate magician MMC and it's just a whole bunch of like mystery and fairy hijinks and I loved it it was very sweet and it hit the spot for me and Olivia Atwater is an auto read author so that was my selection for the July prompt. So for August the prompt is the word like which is something that I also am quite proliferate with in my speech and I chose Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. So this is a little book it's set in 1985 in Ireland and it focuses peripherally on the Magdalene laundries which I had no idea about until I read this. The thing that is going on in the book but it's kept in the periphery it is sort of skirted around but it's one man's just daily life and then his decision to try to help at least one person involved in this. So Claire's writing is beautiful, it's quiet, it's understated but it's just wonderful to read. She's a, Her writing makes the books very readable but with this one I was a bit frustrated. I think I gave it three stars because I wanted to know more about what was happening at these Magdalene laundries. Like I wanted the light to shine directly on the issue whereas I guess this was mimicking the fact that the town was just all sweeping it under the rug and choosing not to look at what was going on and acknowledge it. But that was my choice for the August prompt. So for September, the prompt is senses. So think sight, hearing, taste, smell, touch, and anything associated with those senses. I have not got a book for that, but I will tell you what that is later. October was relationships. So for this one, I chose the friend because a friend is a kind of relationship. And this is about a woman and her deceased friend and the dog that he bequeaths her and sort of the relationship. It's a stream of consciousness type of book about just all of her thoughts. I DNF this because there was a lot of kind of like inappropriate relationship with dog stuff brought up and I, I did not appreciate having that image put into my head. Just think like you scrolled onto Reddit onto something horrible and you wish that you should could bleach your eyes and unsee it. That's what happened in this. And I just didn't like the main character. I didn't like her relationship with a deceased friend. I especially did not like the deceased friend. So none of this was hitting for me. So I did DNF this one, but that was my choice for the October prompt. And then the word for November is only, which is still blank. And the word for December is holiday words. So I think Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, all of that stuff. So I've also got those blanks. So now we're going to go on to what books I'm going to read so I can, comp I can complete this buzzword readathon thing. <laughs> so for January, the word is there, there, there. And for that one, I have chosen Once There Were Wolves. So I believe that this is a mystery thriller set in Scotland. You've got a twin sister biologists who are coming to the Highlands to study wolves, I believe, but also to escape something I think that happened in their past that they're trying to heal from. And I believe someone is murdered and they think that it's the wolves. And I think these sisters believe that maybe the wolves didn't do it. So they want to protect the wolves. And at the same time, then they'll have to find, well, if the wolves didn't kill this person, who did? So hopefully this isn't too horrific in terms of animal cruelty. There is a risk. I know I'm taking a risk. I I can't stand animal torture or cruelty in books. I know I'm picking a book like this. I'm playing with fire. But uh, this was the only book on my TBR with the word there in it. I think I'd seen someone recently talk about it. Maybe it was even Kayla. I'm not sure. And I just added it to my list while I was watching videos um so and I didn't feel like scrolling through Goodreads to try and find another one so I'm going to go for it we'll see how I fare so for September's prompt which is a senses the only book in my current TBR that correlated to that was the book how does it feel so I believe this is a dark adult fantasy romance book <laughs> I might be getting myself into deep water here as well because dark romance and I mm, we're, we're like we're on the rocks you know so a woman basically is foraging for fungi and falls through a fairy portal into the arms of the unseely fey prince. So you've got seely and unseely and generally unseely are like the dark fey. You know, they're the ones that like to play with their prey. And I think he puts her into some sort of trial or contest to fight for her life to survive. Um, I'm guessing it's going to end up being a romance between the two of them, even though the unseely hate filthy humans. So that is what I've chosen for that prompt. So for November, the word was only, and I have two, two books on my TBR. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do as well is I might read one chapter for each of them 
and rate them out of five and whichever one has a higher rating that gets to be the book that goes forward. Speaking of forward, the first book is only forward. So this is a sci-fi book. They've also said it's kind of cyberpunk and also dystopian. And look, I can't even describe what this is. I'm just going to read out the synopsis for it because it's weird and you'll get what I mean in a second. Stark lives in colour, that's colour with a capital C, a neighbourhood whose inhabitants like to be coordinated with their surroundings, a neighbourhood where spangly purple trousers are admired by the walls of buildings as you pass them. Close by is sound, where you mustn't make any, apart from one designated hour a day when you can scream your lungs raw. Then there's red. Get off at fuck station zero if you want to see a tactical nuclear battle recreated as a sales demonstration. Stark has friends in red, which is just as well because something is about to happen. And when a something happens, it's no good chanting duck and cover while cowering in a corner because a something is always from the past. Stark's past. And it won't go away until you face it full on. So yeah, no idea. It's interesting, especially with the capitalized places and the nonsensical locations. It kind of is giving me the Phantom Tollbooth vibes with like the names of the towns and what goes on there and the little rules that apply to those particular cities. So we'll see, that's one option. And then we have Only the Lonely, which is part of the Death Gate Grim Reapers series. And I believe that this is a urban paranormal fantasy mystery with ghosts and witches, I believe. So it's about a woman named Izzy who is an orphan and was raised in New Orleans by a bruja and is now becoming a gatekeeper. But on the first day of her new job, the gate is breached and it is uh, breached by an enhanced wraith. So they send this magical family called the Grimlocks to like back her up. I'm getting like Supernatural Brothers vibes with that. And I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling like this might be a why choose. <laughs> Is it? Because there's multiple members of the family and um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting some possible triangle or multiple partners vibes happening. So that is the other option. And then for December, which is the holiday words, I am picking Valentine's Day because my eldest daughter is named Valentine. So I thought, why not? And I've got one book on my, my TV with the word Valentine in it. So it's an easy choice and it's called My Phony Valentine. And it is a rom-com. Got a hunky hockey player, a fake romance trope, and a woman whose uh, restaurant is failing and decides to just randomly accost a man that, that comes in and claim that it's her boyfriend and for some strange reason he goes along with it. So they just find themselves fake dating. So I don't know how I'll go. Me and uh, contemporary romance, rom-coms especially, it's more miss than hit. But I do have some authors that I found that I absolutely love, like Abby Jimenez. Uh, so it could be it could be that case. We'll see, but at least it'll be just a light and fluffy time. So those are the books that I plan to read to fill fulfill the buzzword a thon challenge. My big kiddo V is unwell, so we're not going anywhere. We're staying home. It's going to start pouring soon. That's why I've got the light on. You're probably thinking, oh, this is new. I don't normally use lights, but it's probably going to be more of a regular thing now that we're in autumn and heading into winter. But I'm going to bake a banana cake because for some reason, even though <laughs> I think I'm going to eat bananas, I, I don't. I don't reach for them. Uh, so they end up always going brown and I always end up making some kind of banana bake good that I didn't intend to, that I didn't intend to make. But it's okay, I've got so much chocolate too to use up after Easter. So chocolate banana bread it is. And I just finished crocheting some little, um, what do you call them? Some little coasters. So I've got to block them to make sure they're, they're all nice and square but I used some cotton yarn that was variegated so each one has its own like little color scheme and personality and I like them it's fun it's bright and it's big so that my big my big mugs because I'm a big mug woman you know I want I want the girth I want the width and the depth and the volume and this way it's going to cover all the spills but I will touch base with you guys once I've read something Okay, so I just finished reading only The Lonely. Uh, in the first chapter, we've got Izzy as a seven-year-old and she's drawn a picture and her parents are like, um, that's an interesting picture. Where did you see that? She said, in my head. And they start freaking out. And then they talk to her more and it turns out she hears voices in her head and she sees pictures of these like monsters in her head and she's drawn one. And her parents are at one of these gates. And then she said, the voices are telling me that he's coming. And they're like, who's coming? And they said, well, 
I don't know, but they said he's coming because he wants to see me because he thinks he can help me. And her parents freak the F out. <laughs> like, we gotta go. We gotta bust ass and get away from this gate and call home office. And that's where we've ended it. So look, obviously it's a bit intriguing. I'm not loving the writing style. So I'd probably give that one, oh, I'd say a seven out of 10. 7 out of 10. So now I'm going to read Only Forward and see what I rate that first chapter, and then I'll know which of the onlys I'll be reading. Okay. <laughs> I just read Only Forward. All right, so we've got a young boy at home alone, and there's a knock on the door, and he knows he's not meant to answer it, but he does. And he opens the door, and there's a man barefoot, in jeans, topless, with no neck or head. And the boy hears him tell him, I guess, uh, telepath telepathically, help me. I can't find my way home. And the boy's like, I can't help you. And the man says, help me, help me. And the boy just closes the door and says, I can't help you. And then he collapses on the floor and cries. And then his mother returns home and finds him crying. But he tells her it was just a dream. But then later he remembers that it had not been a dream. <laughs> <laughs> it's creepy it came it started off creepy but i like the way this is written a little bit more so i'm probably rating this one an eight it was um disturbing but yeah i think i'm gonna go with only forward so that will be my first pick and the first book that i read Hello, hopefully the dryer's not too loud. So I I finished the book. Wow, what a weird book with a capital W that was. Just the setting is weird, the language is weird, the characters are weird, the plot is weird. And I don't know how I feel. I, I'm giving it a three because I'm a bit unsure of what I just read. Basically, you've got main character who sorts things out. You know, so everyone has a kind of skill, people who get to the heart of things. It's, it's like I said, it's got its own terminology. And anyway, he's hired by some people to find a guy that's gone missing from this particular city. So in this world, I think it's just one giant city, but there are enclaves and each enclave is its own country, basically with its own set of rules. And some, it's hard to understand what the rules are because none of the logical rules that apply in our world apply there. So even though I'm a fast reader, it took me forever to read this because I, it's just very hard to make sense of. He basically lives in a place called Color, which has a sort of sentient wall and colors are rotated on a certain basis. It's just, there's a lot of different things. There's a town called Sound, yeah, where people are only allowed to make sound for one hour a day. But yeah, things things are not what they seem. The book takes this really weird, almost upside down, what's that TV show? Stranger Things. You know, I think it's called, is it called The Upside Down? I didn't really watch that show. But that's, that's kind of where they end up going. They're going to this place called Dreamland, which is like meant to be a dreamland, but it's not. And it's just so nonsensical and nightmarish so it does take a turn to very much a lot of body horror and nightmare kind of figures and monsters come into play and a lot of stuff happens but the best part of this book though is there's a town called cats and it's just run by cats and it's run perfectly and humans don't understand how everything works and why everything is so orderly when there are no humans there there are only cats and the cats will only let people into the town that are cat lovers so that was my favorite thing and the cats just seem to have this um, higher intelligence that the humans just aren't sure how it works so that was fantastic but in this there's like a, a kind of romance undercurrent there's feelings obviously that the guy has towards a woman but nothing happens between them yes the the second half of the book just takes this very bizarre nightmarish turn and it's, the way it ends is frustrating and I can't say anything about it, but I'm like, that was what was happening the whole time. And like all these people died because of that. Okay, cool. 
So yeah, I've given it a three because it's interesting. I think I've got a soft spot for sort of like dystopian, speculative fiction, sci-fi books. And that's what's making me give it a high score on the cats. The cats, obviously, <laughs> the kitties, because you know, I love me some kitty cats. I've got three of them. Uh, yeah, otherwise weird and I didn't really, I don't know. I, I think it's one of those books I will forget about. And yeah, it's just too much for my brain to make sense of. As fantastical as my imagination is, I need a, a modicum of, of logic to go with it. But that one's done. I think the next book I'm going to pick up, I'm going to pick up the Valentine one because I just need, I need something so not what I just read. <laughs> Lighthearted, easy, no brain cells required, head empty kind of book. So I'll uh, see you guys next when I've read that. morning so what a night we had a massive storm yesterday as you'll see in the footage that I will include but luckily no flooding I am so 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 happy that my house didn't flood for us so it looks like the repairs made on the gutters and the eaves and the fascia worked so thank goodness for that but I didn't sleep much but that's okay so I just read my phony valentine um, this has Poppy and Dallas as the main couple. I've given it three stars. So it's okay. It's a fake dating trope. So basically Poppy was at a cafe and this mean lady, mean girl, was making fun of her for not having a boyfriend. So she turns in the line and just holds on to the hunky man's arm behind her and said, well, this is actually my boyfriend. And then the mean girl says, what? You're dating Dallas Brooks, whatever his name was. He's a famous hockey player and the guy goes along with it. He's a nice guy and he goes along with it. He's like, this is my girlfriend, yada, yada, yada. And then the paparazzi take photos and the rumor spreads that they're dating. And the next day she wakes up to tons of customers at her cafe. It turns out that dating a celebrity is good for business. So she ends up bumping into him again. And it turns out Dallas himself is having a bit of a hard time um, with some negative press. Some things have happened that have cast a not so great sheen upon him. He's a uh, very meddlesome granny and his PR lady suggests that maybe dating a wholesome small town girl will improve his image. So they sort of come to this uh, agreement that they will fake date so that he can clean up his image and she can get some cash flowing in because she's uh, she's leveraged up to the hilt. She's in debt big time. And look, I, I never ever enjoy that kind of dynamic where someone is profiting financially from being with somebody else, <laughs> like to that extent, um, because it's just, well, oh, if, you know, if you stop dating me, then I'm gonna be broke and I'm gonna lose everything. And it puts a pressure on the person who is helping financially to continue helping. So don't love that aspect. Um, this is so chased. So that was the biggest disappointment for me. I thought I was going to be getting some spice. Uh, pff, Jesus, I, I got more spice in, in a middle grade in YA book, to be honest with you. They had like a few chaste kisses. That is it. That is, that is it. There was a little, kind of a little bit of tension, but not much. It just, yeah, there wasn't enough flirtation. This book went on forever as well. It's not like it didn't have time to build it up. This was a long book, but it was just more focused on like the minutia, like, oh, I'm going to have to cook some recipes and I'm going to go have to watch a hockey game. And then we're going to clean the dishes and then we're going to talk to our lawyers about the NDA agreements. And it just felt like it was just focused on all the mundane things. <laughs> it's like, let's take what's interesting out of a wrong com like funny bits and romance and just focus on like the day-to-day -day goings on of two people you know uh so i didn't love it like it's still three it's not bad but it was boring <laughs> it was boring and then it just finishes as well so i just didn't feel any sort of build up crescendo climax there was um no third act breakup conflict in this 
which is interesting but I guess it's it's a very I think it's like a very low stakes book non-drama so to speak you know there's not a lot of tension so if you want something that's cozy and not stressful this is for you but wasn't for me but three stars uh, today I'm really going through it I have um, endometriosis and menorrhagia and I am I mean I'm in the trenches <laughs> it's it's a it's a hard day so I am just going to cozy up on the couch and read my next pick. So it's between Once There Were Wolves and How Does It Feel. I think I'm going to go with How Does It Feel just because I was so let down from the rom-com. I feel like this dark fey romance is going to have spice, surely. Surely there'll be some naughty, some naughty scenes in this and I feel like I need one after the anticlimactic ending of My Friendly Valentine. Oh, and in terms of how the Valentine's Day thing tied in, it kind of did. There's a big Valentine's Day week sort of tradition in the town when they do things together. and But I don't feel like it really played a big part in the novel. You know, it's just one one portion of their, like, fake dating deeds and things. So I hope these glasses aren't reflecting too much. I should probably just take them off. That's probably better. I don't need to see myself, do I? But yeah, so I think I'm going to go with how does it feel next and I'll touch in with you once I've read that and then there's only one more to go and I've finished the Buzzword Readathon. How exciting. Okay, so I the next book I read was How Does It Feel? And I've given this 1.25 stars. So let's let's get into it. Okay, so this is a dark fae romance. And you've got a lady named Kelly, and she studies mostly insects. But what I loved about this book, okay, first before I tell you the plot, what the one thing I really loved about this book was all of the info on plants and insects and animals. I love that. You're getting like mini biological lessons. And I was really enjoying those bits. I'm like, this is fantastic. I'm learning all about the lunar moths and I'm learning, learning all about this type of fungi. And I liked that. I thought that was fantastic. That's pretty much where my enjoyment ended. So basically, Kelly, researching the migration of lunar moths, ends up falling through a fairy ring of deathly capped mushrooms into this fey realm and lands on the unseely dark prince. And he immediately orders her to be killed. So the guy next to her literally stubs her through her stomach. So it gets into it right out the gate. I don't want to talk too much about the plot in detail to spoil anything, but basically she ends up being his prisoner. And this is a dark romance in that he orders people to rape her, to torture her and to kill her. And yet he's the love interest. And I know some people are like, well, he's not the one doing the essay <laughs> and the killing but my dudes like she's literally begging him begging him just to let her go please and he's like oh you filthy human like i'm going to send this bog creature in and he's going to defile you and do all these horrible things to you and make sure you kill her no <laughs> look it didn't float my boat it didn't float my boat it also felt very sudden his his switch from finding her a foul vile human filth to you are my love and i will do anything for you but at the same time he's still making her participate in these deadly trials so there's that but i i just have to say though too the main character is not likable this this chick is literally telling you oh i am so hot i am so unbelievably beautiful i'm basically scientist barbie those are her words those are her exact words and everyone calls her Disney princess because all of the animals are just like, ha oh, la 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 la, we love you, we love you. And so you f she finds herself in this place. <sighs> Look, I actually have a question to ask. Do you guys think that saying this book has an unreliable narrator, do you think that's a spoiler or is it not? For me personally, I don't find it a spoiler because I don't know exactly what the narrator is being unreliable about, but I'd like to know because people do think it's a spoiler, then it's obviously something I will not say. But this book was just ridiculous. <sighs> there is so much torture. There's a lot of, uh, you know, threats of essay and disgusting acts, like really, really foul, foul things that I wish I could scrub from my memory, to be honest with you. The world building is weird. <laughs> the characters are just redonkulous and it just felt, all, it felt a bit silly. It felt a bit silly. I think this 
was a former Wattpad book and that just blown up. I don't know. So I was trying to rack my brain. How did I add this to my TBR? I think this went viral on BookTok and I must have seen somebody else just talking about it and thought, oh, it sounds good in theory and then just added it. But no, I, why did I push through the end? I don't know. Is there a twist at the end? Yes, but it's one of those twists that's just, uh, come on, man. That's just pff, out of left field. Like, what the heck? What the heck, bro? So it's one of those twists and that just makes me angry. Those kind of twists just make me angry. <laughs> and I am not continuing on. It just was just ridiculous, guys. And like I said, the main love interest, bleh, like I just want to projectile vomit. And that's what I feel like I was doing this whole time, just swallowing down puke, because that's how this book made me feel. Not yucking anybody else's yum. I know everyone's got their own like kinks and likes in fiction, because I'm aware this is fiction. Not for me. I think I, I have yet to find like a dark romance. I, my idea of dark romance is a guy that does bad things to people that deserve it. <laughs> You know, it's like, look like Reese Ant. He's my idea of a dark romance lead. Like he, he does murder and torture and do shit, but I feel like most of it is justifiable and I can look the other way. Whereas this guy, like, oh girl. But then again, maybe they deserve each other. So that being said, they deserve each other. So it's a 1.25, not great. Uh, but the next book I read, oh man, this was fantastic. This was phenomenal. This was for the January prompt of there, there, there. And it is Once There Were Wolves. And I love this. Okay, so I've given this four and a half stars. I cannot give it five because there is a ton of animal deaths in this book. Like so many, so many animals die. And also a lot of essay and domestic violence, which I was not anticipating at all. So let me talk about the plot first, the plot. You've got two Aussie girls, Aussie, 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 oi, 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 and these sisters are like this, like, this is how close they are. Can you see? And no, there's no space there because they are enmeshed. Their personalities are each other's personalities. That's the level of their closeness. So you've got the main character, Inti, and Inti has this neurological condition in that she can feel anything other people feel if she sees it. So for instance, if she watches some person get their nose broken, she feels like her nose has just been broken. If she sees some creep rubbing his heart on, she could have, she's going to feel that too. Uh, so that's her predicament. Anything she sees, other people's pain and pleasure and sensations are her own. Not just people, animals also. And then you've got her sister, Aggie, who has gone through a traumatic experience and has basically become a bit of a shell and has to be cared for. So you're also introduced to the children's parents. You've got the mother who investigates murders and crimes against women and he's not shy about telling her young children all of the horrific details of these crime cases and then you've got their father who's basically a druid or a wood fairy who lives in the forest and tells the girls if they're going to eat animals they have to kill the animals and eat them top to toe and you see an opening scene where he goes to gut a rabbit and obviously Inti feels that and passes out so she ends up developing an absolute affinity with animals. She becomes a wolf woman. And you find the sisters up in the Scottish Highlands where she's part of this project to reintroduce wolves into the ecosystem there because they were eradicated and it's caused an imbalance, a massive imbalance. Basically all of the deer are running around unchecked and just trampling and eating all the shit. So they're like, well, if we introduce the wolves here, like we did in Yellowstone Park in America by introducing an apex predator. It keeps the deer in check and allows the land to regenerate and thrive. There's, you know, a balance there. Unfortunately, she's met with a lot of pushback. Like these, these sheep farmers don't want no wolves possibly eating their livestock and are none too shy about making their voices known that they will shoot a wolf if they see a wolf. So Inti is already at loggerheads with everybody in this town. And then what happens is someone is killed. Is it a wolf or is it a person? And if it's a person, is it possibly the man that she's currently sleeping with? So this book also didn't get a five star for me based on how it ended. For me, it doesn't matter how much you love something, if that something commits heinous acts, has to face the music for those acts. 
and I don't think it's the right choice to turn a blind eye to it just because you love that something. So that ending, yeah, I was like, well, no, no, I'm sorry. I do not think that's the right thing. And it actually made me a little bit mad, you know? But Indy has to decide what lengths is she going to go to to protect the wolves? So obviously the wolves in this are just still your heart, okay? And like, I can't believe I got through this book with all the animals that were being killed by people, by animals. It was just, it was a lot, but the writing was great, the pacing was fantastic, the atmosphere, the setting, characters felt distinct, and I wouldn't say they're likeable though, I'm going to put that caveat in there, but I just enjoyed everything about it, uh, besides, like I said, the copious amount of animal deaths and essay and domestic violence. So once again, those two themes are also very prevalent in this book, and just the whole thing, like who can you trust, and how far are you willing to go to protect the things that you love? <sighs> yeah. Um, this was the best thriller that I've read. I am not a thriller lady, as you might already know. So for me to say this is was actually really, really good and I was taken on a great ride, it's good. It's good. I highly recommend. And um, as long as you can stomach the, the themes that I just mentioned. But yeah, I gave this four and a half stars. So this has been so far the best read of this particular vlog and... Yeah, I, look, it's one of those books that I had to really try very hard to stop thinking about it after I finished reading it. I was like, I don't want to remember this anymore. <laughs> as good as it was, I'd rather not remember <laughs> all of the things that happened. To finish off the buzzword, readathon challenge, I'm so happy to finish it on Once There Were Wolves. This was really fun. I highly recommend giving it a go if you want to, I don't know, add some, add some excitement to your reading in terms of choosing what to pick. But so thank you to Kayla from Books and Lala for creating the, the prompts. And until next time, stay well, Star Child.